Hi, this is Phil Yanov with Your Day. And once again, we are on video. So you might be just hearing my voice on the radio, and that's okay. But if you actually want to see what we look like, you can go to yourday.clemson.edu and watch this segment on the air. And I'm here at the super secret data lab with Verizon Wireless with Laquita Riley. Laquita, welcome to Your Day. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. I am glad to be talking to you because there are questions, and some of them are even mine. But uh, here, let me tell you, we're here to talk about 4G, and this 4G LTE stuff. And I'm going to start with a little bit of a personal story. A couple of weeks ago, I'm with my brother, and my brother says, and I said, I'm talking about what phone I might get next. And I said, I'd like to have a 4G phone. And he said, my iPhone is 4G. And I looked at him, I said, no, it's not 4G. And he said, no, it is. I said, there aren't any 4G iPhones. And you know, that whole versioning thing has got people a little bit confused. So listen, this is you and me. Can we, do you think we can fix that? I think we can, I think we can. All right, let's tell people about what 4G is and is not. The first thing 4G is not is, is an acronym. Um, and that's what some people I think try to relate it to. 4G, LTE, it's an alphabet party. The biggest thing where, where, where consumers or customers can relate to 4G is how it works and what it will do for them. Um, and the key word here is speed, right? So everybody always wants to do, do it quicker and faster. So that's what 4G brings. So if I could tell you, if I can give you an example of what 4G really is and how it works, it's the ability to download a song in 30 seconds versus downloading a song in three minutes. It's the ability to download a 10 megabyte file, which is a huge file, in one minute flat versus 20 minutes. So that, it's about that's what speed. people are going to see first off, right? I mean, yeah. if you have a 4G phone, well, first off, it's going to say 4G up in the corner on the display. So that should be a clue. Yes. But the other thing is, if you actually have a phone that supports that, I mean, the things that I see when I play around with these phones is mm -hmm. they are much faster. I mean, th that's probably the number one thing I see. And so it's song, certainly, but video is probably one of those other things. Video is huge. And, and especially if I could shoot a little video, I take a picture of my kids or a video of my kids, getting it back up onto the net is very fast. It's very good. Video, of course, is probably one of the biggest things. It's also video chat. I don't know if you've ever done any video chat with anyone. You have the ability to, uh, you could do chatting on several different types of applications with family members who are near and abroad. And on our 4G network, it cuts, cuts out the choppiness. The latency is a whole lot better. It is amazing, isn't yes. it? Now, I had a chance to play with that. My sister just adopted a baby girl out of China. So while she was in China, I had my 4G equipment and I was able to use the video chat so that I could actually talk to her when she's in China. She's 12 hours away in the clock, but I mean, that was wonderful, right? Because they're away, they feel disconnected, but that whole video experience was awesome. Exactly. So I like that a lot. Um, so I get some other questions about it. So okay. one of the things I've seen is that supposedly at least if I believe everything I read, that 4G works better in some building environments than the 3G network might have before. It's What I see is, it, the way you guys typically say it is, building penetration is better. Did I get that right? You did, you got that exactly right. And if you if you had to draw a picture uh, to show, show someone kind of what it meant, if you pull up a chart and you draw wave patterns, right? If you draw wave patterns really quickly, um, you know, maybe like you would see on a heart monitor, the, the smaller the wave patterns and then they smaller and the faster they move, you're, you're going to get some latency. But if you draw big open wave patterns kind of up and down, that kind of translate how the throughput in the building works with our 4G. I always translate it to a radio station. It's really good to get a good radio station at 100.1, and that's because the frequency is so low. It allows better penetration for using them in buildings, uh, you know, maybe down in the in the basement area. So that's how that works. You know, that, that's been my experience too. But I didn't know if that was for everybody. But as I play around, if I hold a 3G phone, 4G phone side by side, I typically am getting in buildings a better signal off the 4G phone, which is to, for me, it's sort of a better call. Yeah. Okay. Talk about. Now, 4G isn't available everywhere. Where is it and where is it not? And how can I figure that out if I'm someone's trying to figure out if I should buy a 4G phone? The easiest thing to do is to go to our website. If you go to verizonwireless.com and you click on 4G, it will actually give you a map of everywhere our 4G is located. So without your having to you know, call and ask you know, your friend or your brother who, ha who thinks he has a 4G iPhone, you could very easily I go to I hope he this. doesn't see this, by the way. <laughs> Eddie, stop watching, but go ahead. You could actually go to the website and it'll tell you everywhere that our 4G is offered. Okay. Yes. And is that, 
if you're just trying to describe it, of course, most of our folks watching, listening, they're in the state of South Carolina, maybe a little North Carolina, Georgia. Can you describe about where that usually looks like if they're not at the website yet? We I don't want them to leave until we're done. I can. Of course, Greenville, yeah. right here, uh, Columbia, Beaufort, Charleston, um, Hilton Head. Hilton I Head. I got the yes. bit of it in Hilton, Hilton Head. In Head. South I was thinking about this off the, just kind of thinking about This wasn't those, supposed to be a pop quiz, so <laughs> anyway, we can look at the map. Yes, but, uh, in those areas. A lot of the major metro areas, we've actually got it already, yes. and it works really well. I mean, it's kind of cool to be able to drive around with a 4G signal in town, if that's where you are. Very but, cool. it, but again, 4G isn't going to matter for you if the 4G isn't in your area yet, so you have to, it'd be good to take a look at the map and figure out what that is. That is correct. Okay, what about the future? for this what's this look like going forward more spaces more would we get more coverage more bandwidth what does that mean more spaces more more coverage more bandwidth everything that you said um, in in 4g relating to our consumers it's going to make life easier for them one thing that I always talk about is it let's just say you were home you moved your clothes from the washing machine over to the dryer you, but you left the dryer and you never turned it on with our 4g uh, LTE you would have the ability to be sitting at your desk and think oh, I forgot to turn the dryer on and turn the dryer on remotely, not even at home. So that way your kids or, you know, whatever it is that you were using those uh, needed the clothes to be dry for will be dry when you get home. Talk to me about that. I don't see my phone doing that. Is that, is that really what happens now? This is really what's happening now. Um, we've got a project uh, in Vision Charlotte that's going on also uh, where that is completely powered by our LTE network where when you turn the switch on, it's connected to the grid. And, you know, it's kind of Charlotte's envision, I guess, of going green and showing just how much power, power usage is happening. So lots of different projects in the future with LTE. All right. Um, this whole idea of maybe sending my phone out for milk or whatever, I kind of like that idea. Look, if my phone would just send my grocery list, copy it to my wife, I think I'd be okay. That's very cool stuff. Uh, what else for... Uh, and, 4G, let's say I'm going out today, talk about the stuff that's out there. I mean, there are phones, there are portable hotspots, there are gadgets that I can pluck into my laptop. I mean, are we, it seems like some of this stuff is just sort of coming online. I mean, there's not as many phones maybe as I'd like. What does that look like? Um, we, we have a really robust lineup coming, of course, with, with 4G. Um, and not only with the, with the air cards, you know, that you're talking about being able to put into your laptop and, and use them wirelessly, we have those as well. But it will actually be a part of your car. So if you're talking about things that are futuristic and not that far away, um, that you would have the ability to just kind of have your car as a, as a mobile office that will have 4G inside of it, that will allow you to do all the things that you would do sitting right in your office. Right now, we have the 4G air cards that you can use and you can connect up to five people. So all five people will be able to do their work just as quickly as um, you know, someone who actually has just a regular 4G phone. I mean, that, that is really cool too, right? I mean, that old ability, for example, to be in my car with my portable hotspot and have network speeds like I would have at my desk at work I mean, that's pretty powerful stuff. But that's what it's about. It's about you being able to have uh, connected solutions but not being connected. That's the, that's the whole concept of going wireless, but having the speed that you would have in an office. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to work great for me. I'm guessing other folks are having sort of similar responses to it. So I can get hot spots, I can get the air cards that you talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, phones, what are the, some of the phones that we're seeing out now that are 4G ready to go? Our latest lineup, of course, is the Motorola Bionic um, that, of course, is 4G capable. Um, it, it also has a 4G hotspot on the phone as well. So you don't have to have two separate devices. You can have your phone. And, of course, as long as you're in a, a 4G area, you can get 4G signals and be able to use your hotspot. So if you have your laptop with you and your laptop is Wi-Fi capable, you can just put your phone right beside it, turn it on, and you'll have the ability to have Internet connected to your um connected with your bionic. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you for helping us understand this You're a little bit. Welcome. And hopefully we've cleared up a little bit of the uh, mystery on 4G. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to your day.